Hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel, Reading Ideas. So this is going to be a little bit different. Yeah, because I'm not quite sure what title I'm going to put on this, but we're going to have a, a run and a bit of a, a bit of a rant. But here's, here's where we are and what we're going to be doing. So there's your moo cows. And that there is Cluffer Pike, a thousand foot up. We're going to run up it and have a bit of a chat. So, I don't know if you'll see that pheasant there. But that's where we're going to run up. Cluff a pike, get to the top, come back down. Now we're going to have to, we're going to, have to get going because I've got, I've got to be back before seven to give her some, somebody a door my lift. Now... Oh, I should have done this yesterday, it was beautiful and clear. It's going to be a lovely day, but it's a bit overcast at the moment. So we're going to do our best to run a thousand foot up and to... Uh, I'm going to have a bit of a rant on the way up. <laughs> right, okay, so... We'll be, going, we'll be going past the gamekeeper's cottage, so... I don't know if the... Uh, the hounds, the hounds of the Basker Baskervilles will start ranting away in a minute but always makes me think of Hansel and Gretel All right now what's this what's this rant about well we'll kind of see along the way oh gamekeeper's cottage so here's the thing now there's a couple of big elections coming up isn't there one in about, is it nine days now, in this country, and one in America. Um, and here's a, here's a interesting take on it. Okay. Now, there's in both countries, there's a bit of a, a bit of a complaint that. It's not really working out for poor people. So that's what we'll, that's what we're gonna be talking about. Now also as well that in the UK there's the Labour Party, in America there's the Democrats. And you can try and figure out at the end. Oh look at this. Oh my god, it's different running uphill. Yeah, so you can try and figure out by the end of this what I'm in favour of or not, but and whether you agree or well, you can't disagree with what I'm going to say in that it's true or not, but you can disagree on your interpretation. But in both countries, America, US. There's a complaint against Labour and uh, the Democrats that they don't fully, and you can have your opinion, they don't now represent uh, the poor adequately and that they favour um, University types, shall we say. Now, you know, I'm, from, I'm a working class lad from Bury Lancashire. I've had a university education uh, and thankful for it. But there is a dark side to education, okay? And I suppose that's what this little rant is going to be about. Now, I don't know the American system that well, but in the UK, unless you pay to go private, oh, this is tough running uphill. But there we go. Unless you pay to go private, you send your kids 
most people do. Off they toddle to state school when you can get your kids in. At four or five year old, depending on when they're taken in. Um, and they're there for 11 years and at 16 they come out a lot of people stay on but let's just say that so they've had 11 years of being taught I was a maths teacher 11 years in school and then at 16 or they might still be 15 they take the national exams GCSEs the General Certificate of Education sorry General Certificate of Secondary like for secondary school 11 to 16 GCEs are available General Certificate of Secondary Education got a little bit of a flat bit coming up which will help so that's what happens so at 16, 15, 16, they take their exams and uh, some pass and some don't now this is the pit and people know that obviously some pass maths some don't pass maths now that's then crucial for life chances because they will ask you when you go for jobs or courses leading to jobs higher education they will ask you it's a bit sneaky it's a little bit hidden but they will ask you whether you have this combined group so it's kind of like one qualification do you have five of those GCSEs at level four or above including English and maths in other words did you pass your maths and English GCSE and three others yes in no on your bike off you go so oh here we go gate now now you might think right well that's fine yeah not everybody can pass their exams we'll come on to that so now this has been a moving feast over the years God, that's still going up I'm still talking uh, right now so what type of exam are these GCSEs I hear you ask I didn't but <laughs> so right there's different types of exams there's standards and there's ranks a standard test is where you have to meet a standard can you fly this plane is an example of a standards test in the UK the one that most people take is a driving test a driving test oh it's tough here oh it's not going to get any easier oh, that was steep see it's look how far we've come up already so a driving test is a standards test the driving in um, instructor and uh, examiner has a list of criteria things that you have to do and if you can do them tick them off you are allowed so many minor faults but no big ones it's not good if you bump into the car in front the traffic lights so and if you reach that standard you are allowed to drive okay oh tough here oh my calves oh, look at this 
Have you met Heather? Have you met her? Nice girl, Heather. Oh, no, Fern. <laughs> it's too early in the morning. Heather, Fern. Hey, it's Fern. So, technically, or potentially, everybody can drive. You know, the test has changed over the years, but you meet that standard, you can drive. So, I know you're asking, these GCSEs, are they a standard? For someone to pass maths, do they have to reach a standard in maths? And here's where you might be shocked. They fib and say yes, and I'll give you the reason, but the answer is no, because it's a rank. Now, you might be happy with this, but a rank, simple example, is like the 100 meters. So you do the 100 meters in the Olympics, you finish quickest, you win. Gold. Go second, get silver. You know the stuff, it's a rank. There is no standard. You know, there'll be a rough standard because you'll know it from how people have run before. But there's no finishing time. If you get all over the line in 10 seconds, you don't all get gold medals. Okay, so it's a rank. And GCSEs are like that. Now, just a little side note. It could be that just as everybody was setting off for the oh, tough course here at the moment, 100 meters, they all trip up and they all break the legs and they crawl over the finish line in like five hours. But whoever crosses that line wins. So there's no standard, okay? It's just worked out by the system. GCSEs are like that, all of them. If we just stick to mass. So what happens is your little child is in, well, you know, year 10, year 11, the 14, 15, 16, they're in the class and the teacher is going, Come on kids, we need to learn Pythagoras today. You need it for your exam, it's on your exam. You've got mocks next week, exams next month, blah, blah, blah. Little hand goes up. This, sir, so, yeah. What percentage do I need to pass my GCSE at the required level? Used to be a C grade. Now they've done a bit of rebranding, which I'll tell you why at some point. To a level four. There's this. What do I need for a level four? And that's when your teacher's like, oh God, I knew it. And they're still not ready, still not happy with the answer that they have to give. So all your kids, the day that they walk into that exam, the exam board's bricking it, you're bricking it, they're bricking it, but it's gonna be out of 240 marks. No one knows how many it is to get a level four. Isn't that strange? Imagine going into your driving test and the examiner doesn't know exactly what you have to do to pass. So this is how it works. All your kids take the exam, all the marks are collected up, and then they do a graph of it, the exam board, try and get it norm referenced. You can look that up, I'll put it up if you want. Oh, look at this. Oh, come to norm referencing on the hill. And no, <laughs> And uh, oh, so all the results woo, go into a computer, tap a few buttons, and let's say there's a million nine hundred thousand kids 
take the exam. Excuse me. And, and we're back. Oh God, this hurts. And a thousand kids take the exam. We then work backwards. We want two and a half percent of the little kiddie winkles to get a nine in the old age style. Right, working backwards at 240. If we go through two and a half percent of them, the level nine pass rate is 216 marks at 240. Right, anyone who gets 216 or above gets a nine. Funky dory. Then you do the eights, the sevens, the sixes. Bearing in mind, the vast majority of kids are going to be in a bunch in the middle somewhere. There's then that cut off line. Where's it going to land? Oh no, I got 128. Is that, not that you'll know, is that a pass this year or not? Let's wait and see what everyone else gets. So, that line goes down. Hi, six. Can't get backwards running uphill. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So, while you purposefully fail, I'm not, oh, jump the gun. While you purposefully get two and a half percent um, level nines, you also get, no matter how good they did, but they came in the lower half. So where's that line drop? Boom. Anyone who gets below this mark gets less than a four. You haven't passed your maths. So, there's a percentage, no matter how good they are at maths, fail maths, because it's a rank. Okay, now, most of you will be there going, if your kids are done well, that is. Well, that's fair, because we all, we all had the same chance, well, of course not everybody has the same chance, but we all had the same chance, we all sat the same paper, so, you want to do better, work harder, or you might be thinking it's fine because we are genetically selecting the elite people. You might think that, and that's fine. But you now have, and remember, that will happen, same will happen for English and your other subjects. So, at the end of the day, at 16, your kids are looking at that piece of paper. Is it second to last Thursday in August every year? Look at that piece of paper. Oh, eh, oh. Yeah, life choices there and then. Boom, boom. Pass, fail. And that's what happens at 16. At 16, you get two categories of people, qualified and unqualified, in those five. Passes and failures. Yeah? Failures. So what percentage is that? Well, 67% of people pass maths each year. That's the amount that they let through. Unless the politicians get the claws in, let through more, take away, you know, take away some. Not before an election. Uh, and 68% pass English. So, but for the five. So what you can spend. So I say you pass maths, but don't pass English. You can't spend your maths. You don't have to try and resit. Good luck with that, by the way. You get no support then, because you're thick, mate. Sorry, sorry, not my opinion. Um, so, 
the percentage that get five A stars to C's, including English at maths at the old C grade, neither level four or above, is 57% every year, unless they tweak it. Which means that 43% having taken maths, English, and whatever else it is that they've taken, haven't passed it. And off you go. Now, firstly, it didn't used to be that high. It used to be a less, a lot less. So you might think that's better. More kids passing, more kids going to university. But it's not for the following way. If you are one of the people that did not pass. In the olden days, <laughs> when I was younger, when I, went, when I had a job in the year before going to uni, because I wasn't sure whether to bother going or not. That's an interesting tale. Um, I worked in part of the NHS for a year, a buying operation, they were centralising it. Interesting. And there were two types of bosses. There were those that went to university and there were those that had waked, worked their way up from the bottom. Sometimes there's a bit of ruffled feathers between the two groups, chip on shoulders, snootiness, whatever. But there were two types of bosses. There ain't any more, is there? There's not a lot of working up. There might still be some, but now, if you don't pass your GCSEs, you don't go to the local bank and work your way up. Solicitor's office, retailer, doesn't happen. Degree only. Now, the degrees, because everybody who passes the GCSEs doesn't go on to uni. Of each year group now, it's roughly 37% of that year group will get a degree and 63% won't. So if you advertise a job that says, you need a degree for this job in our HR department, whoosh. 63% of people in that age group automatically can't apply. They might have been with your company for 25 years. They might work in HR, but you put that on there, you can't apply. You put five GCSEs to come and work in the local newspaper to train up five GCSEs. Okay, 57% of that year group can apply and 43% cannot. Now you might go, it's fair, it's fair, it's fair. They both get a chance at it. Now that's the system and it's fair in that you can both do it but there's things that aren't fair about it which I will mention but it's kind of fair like Russian roulette so we're going to spin it I'll go first you go second we'll carry on whoever wins gets a million pounds oh I'm happy with that oh I'm not happy I don't want to play Russian roulette you have to you have to, sorry, 57% of us are going to win and 43 are going to lose. And it's fine, because I'm clever and you're not. We'll come on to that. Now, you still might be thinking it's fair. We haven't looked at those qualifications yet. Oh, flatter. Oh, imagine if it's not on and I've done all that. <laughs> it's on. Um, right, come on Sony XD1000, don't let me down. So, repercussions. Now, I'll give you a measure to see whether you think it's fair. And the measure is the nurse measure. Who can apply to be a nurse and who can't? You need five GCSEs and then to pass them, 
to get on to the training course. So if you pass maths at a level nine, but English at a level three, apparently those people don't exist by the way, but anyway, so if you're good at maths, not English, no. You're good at English, not maths, no. You get a five and a three, no. On the rare instance that you pass English and maths, but don't have three others, no. You can't apply to be a nurse. Again, you might think that's fair. You might think, when my lovely grandma, oh, look at that, you won't be able to see it. There's Ingleborough off in the distance. Sun rays coming through. Oh, you won't be able to zoom in. Anyway, so you might think, that's fair. My granny's important to me. I only want the clever people applying to be nurses. Right, so you're saying that of the kids that go in, imagine them clicked off, it better not be full. Oh, nightmare. So, so of those four or five, it's to the top, it's cut out, I'll tell you the rest in the car on the phone. Is it gonna cut off? Nightmare, memory card full. Right, well, at least I've got a bit of a breather. I'm back home, showered, uh, up early in the morning, running uphill. It's tough when you start out, half asleep. But my word, how fantastic you feel when you're getting back towards the car. And, oh, God, cracky when you get a cup of coffee when you're back. And that breakfast, delicious. Right, oh, wait, okay, so I'm back. I say I will try and finish my point quick now that we're home. It's very, very simple. At 16, the qualifications in the UK separate out our children into 57% qualified and 43% unqualified. Those 43% cannot apply to be nurses unless they try and resit their exams, which is very, very difficult because there's very little support to it. And they ha they're back in the exam and having to beat everybody else again. Now, you might think that's fine, but I'm not so sure that selecting people, doing Pythagoras and percentages and doing essays on Romeo and Juliet is the best way of selecting a nurse in comparison to how it used to be, where they go on a course to see if they can, the nurse's course, do they pass the course to be a nurse? So that's, that's quite strange. And the reason it was done, it started off in the 1980s under Margaret Thatcher, uh, when she came in and stopped a lot of government spending and cut, cut a lot of this, and it created mass unemployment. And that was starting to lower wages everywhere. So what happened is that people looked around and looked at doctors and saw that their, their wages were not dropping and they had the protection of their qualifications. So lots of jobs went through the process of changing to a qualification. Now, the, that is, it's, you can argue that it's to make sure that there's a standard but that wasn't what it was designed for in the first place. The reason that it was brought in was to keep wages high by keeping out people who they could say they could put a limit on. No, we've got enough now. We've, you know, we've got enough people into the job. We're not letting more in and it keeps the wages artificially high. That is why uh, lots of jobs went in terms into quali you know qualifications that you required qualifications to do it. Uh, you know you might disagree with that, but it literally happened. It was on the news week after week. I watched it on the news. They were all saying, "Oh, nurse nursing was one of the last to go," and as they were all doing it, they were all saying, "Oh my God, you know we're we're not quite sure that there's enough professionalism in our job to make it." that it requires qualifications to degree level to do it. So can you imagine that? Oh, we're not quite sure that you, you, you know, that, that being a nurse is a degree level. What idiots, you can get a degree in anything, can't you? Harry Potter studies, you know, history of the Beatles, you can get a degree in anything, write a few essays, get someone to sign it off, jobs are good. 
so that's that's why uh, jobs went in in you know down this down this line they say now it's to get the best standard of people like i say that brings you back to the well what's on the gcse exam you know what percentage of babies born each year you know four or five going into school should be capable of being a nurse i'm pretty sure it should be higher than 57 percent of them should be allowed to attempt the nursing course that's that's kind of my rant but you may disagree that's totally fine but you now have two sections of society you have got two jobs that are quite close you have got the nurse's job which requires qualifications to enter and the an the average salary for a nurse is 36000 pounds a year a very close job and you know you can whinge and whine and people will is a care assistant okay you know love nurses to bits but they're not diagnosing people yeah it's how complicated is the job of a nurse don't scream nurses don't scream okay <laughs> you know how much more comp complex is it than a care assistant and you know can you know, uh, you know what percentage of people could actually do the nurse's job if they were allowed to try it is my issue nurses qualified requires qualifications 36000 pounds care assistants requires no qualifications 16000 pounds if you are on 16000 pounds a year working hard doing that job thinking i'd like to be a nurse but i can't apply because i didn't pass my maths i wasn't quite good at pythagoras whatever one of the pe one of the political parties says I'm going to try and get you a minimum wage an extra 50 pence an hour. Great. You think that the nurses won't? Nurses are, are on strike for more money. And care assistants aren't. That is our society. So, um, so, oh, right. Thank you very much for that extra 50 pence. But I'm not quite, I'm not quite happy. Why are you not happy? Because I can't apply to be a nurse. They're on 36 grand and I'm on 16. And both political parties are backing that up. If you have the Labour Party being taken over by doctors, teachers, lawyers, loads of lawyers, all saying we need more money into services... A lot of poor people, rightly or wrongly, look at that and think, you are signing your own wage check. You're asking for more money. The latest big one is mental health services, isn't it? So, I know, Mr. Miss 16,000, I know you're a bit depressed because you can't buy your own home, and all those nurses on 36,000 can. But don't worry, we're going we're gonna to take in more tax off you, and all those billionaires hopefully they won't leave the country we're going to take in more money in tax either by at your wage or we'll print a load of money or we'll issue government debt which your kids and will have to pay off but anyway we're going to get more services so that you well you can't afford your house you know 16 grand you can have some mental health service so in eight weeks time you can come and see me for an hour for a chit chat I know I will be on 80 grand to provide you those services, but it's lovely, isn't it? That's why there is a section of society that is not quite happy. And at the moment, even though that some of them are deplorable, they are still allowed to vote. They're not happy. Those votes are going to go somewhere. Just saying.